Okay, in this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to solve another reciprocal trigonometric equation. Um, so my last podcast, I already addressed Roman numeral 1, so we're going to try Roman numeral 2. So I want to find all values of x um, in this domain uh, where the cosecant of x what times 1 third will give you negative 1 half. Um, so the first thing I would do here is actually convert this cosecant x to a, a primary trigonometric ratio. So we should all know by now that the cosecant secant of any angle is the same thing as 1 over the sine of x. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and plug this into that equation. So negative 1 half is equal to 1 third times the cosecant of x, which is the same thing as 1 over sine x. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and simplify. So I get negative 1 half is equal to, if I put these two fractions together, I get 1 over 3 sine x. Uh, next thing you want to do is, when you solve a trig equation, you always want to try to isolate that, um, that trig ratio. So I'm going to do a cross multiplication here. I'm going to get negative 3 sine x is equal to uh, 2. Therefore, sine x is equal to 2 over negative 3. Now, if you look on your unit circle, you're not going to find any angles where the sine of that angle is negative it was negative 2 over 3. 2 over 3 doesn't actually exist on the unit circle. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use our calculator, a uh, combination of our calculator and the cast rule. Um, so first thing I would do is actually find out where on our Cartesian plane will these uh, x values lie. Um, so my x value, sine x, is given by negative values. So using add sugar to coffee, I should know that sine will be negative in two quadrants. It's going to be negative in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So here are my two possible solutions. Each of these solutions has the same reference angle. And the key to solving this equation is to actually go ahead and find that reference angle. So reference angle is given by finding the sine inverse of this ratio, but the positive case because the reference angles are always positive. So we don't take the sine inverse of negative 2 over 3, but positive 2 over 3. So going into the calculator here, make sure you're in the right mode. And I'm going to go ahead and take the negative, or sorry, sine inverse of positive 2 over 3. And that's going to give me my reference angle 41.8 degrees. Okay, so where is this angle on the, on my Cartesian plane? So this is the reference angle. So this angle right here is 41.8 degrees. And this angle right here is also 41.8 degrees. So it's not necessarily my answer, um, but it's going to help me find the answers. So let's go back to the domain that we have here. It's a bit of a complicated one, so I'd like to split it up first into a negative and positive case. So we're going from nine, negative 90 degrees to 0 first, and then we go from 0 degrees to positive pi, or not pi, sorry, 180 degrees. Okay? All right. So let's address, um, let's address this domain first. So from everything from negative, pi, negative 90 to 0. So let's find those angles. 0 degrees is right here. Negative 90 is located down here. So do we have any solutions between 0 and negative 90? And we actually do. We have one solution from here to here. Now, what is that angle? That angle is 41.8 degrees, but it's the negative case of that because we're going in the clockwise direction. So my first possible value for x is equal to negative 41.8 degrees, because once again, we're going in the clockwise direction. Now let's address the last domain from 0 to 180. Okay, so it's positive. So 0 degrees is right here, 0 degrees, and 180 is located here. Now that's a funny bit of a funny domain because we actually don't have any solutions in that domain. So our, our one and only solution for this equation is 41 negative 41.8 degrees. And that's how you do that question.